In this tutorial I want to talk about recording directly into Premiere Pro. The first thing to say is that you can record into any audio channel you like and you can record as you are watching your program monitor. So if you've made your production and you want to do a narration after the event you can set up to record in Premiere Pro, watch the actual production and narrate it as it's going through so your timing can be excellent and overall you can get a brilliant sound. Now I haven't got any video to go with so I'm just going to show you the basics of recording. Now if you make mistakes sometimes it's better to re-record on a separate audio channel rather than going back to the previous audio channel so that you can move between multiple audio channels. You can always add more audio channels by right clicking and going to add tracks and the add track dialog box then allows you to say I don't want any video tracks so I can take that to zero and then I can add as many audio tracks as I like. I can even add submixes. So you can actually add channels. If I click OK, you'll see that I've added audio 4. If you have recorded on multiple channels because of issues that you've had and you don't want to overwrite what's gone before and you end up with an awful lot of channels in your audio mixer, if you've finished with a channel, what you can do is go to the panel menu here and go to Show Hide Tracks. And if you know that you've finished with a particular channel, say we've finished with the one that says Narration, I can simply click on that one that I don't want to see it anymore and then I click OK and when I do so you'll see that this channel that's called NAR will finish. So click that, it's gone. So you can show and hide channels very easily. Again if I want them back I can go down to show and hide tracks and I can show all and I can hide all. So if you do work on multiple channels bear in mind if your panel starts to get really full and you've finished with particular tracks you can always get rid of them or just shy them or hide them in the background. So I'm going to click OK. Now what you need to do is you need to set up your audio preferences because as I showed in the previous tutorial say I want to record here on audio 2 and I click the record button it comes up and says you've not set up your hardware so I'm going to click OK. Now I'm working on a PC and on a Mac it's going to be very slightly different to setting up your audio hardware and I've got the help menu the Adobe help file just to show you what it says. It says setting up a USB microphone for Mac OS in the audio MIDI setup application in utilities go to audio open aggregate device editor and then check the following device that you've selected it could be a line in device it doesn't have to be a USB device and then select this new aggregate device with, within Premiere Pro's audio hardware preference panel now I'm going to show you the audio hardware preference panel in a moment but this is how you set it up in Mac it's obviously a slightly different version when it comes to Windows so I'm just going to get rid of that and go to my preferences obviously on a Mac it's Premiere Pro preferences on a PC it's edit preferences and then the first one I'm going to go to is audio now there are three sections as audio audio hardware and audio output mapping we're just going to start off with the audio section and the first one to look at is this button here which says play audio while scrubbing this is checked and what that means is when I pull my current time indicator through my audio I get a sense of where I am audibly I can hear it now sometimes that's a tremendous advantage and sometimes it's a right pain in the neck if you're working through a long production so know that you can turn it off if it becomes annoying and turn it back on under your audio settings in preferences the second one that I have checked says mute input during timeline recording and this is obvious really if I am recording and the input is playing back, it's not muted, I run the risk of feedback. It's going to pick it up and it's going to go around in the feedback loop and I end up with howling and it sounds terrible. I really want to mute the input. I don't want the input playing back through my speakers unless of course I'm on headphones in which case I might want to leave this unchecked. But if I'm working on speakers I certainly don't want my input to play through the speakers, go straight back into my microphone and cause me all kinds of problems automatic peak file generation a peak file is a file that any audio application needs to generate which is actually the waveform that you see it's a very small file doesn't take up a lot of space but when you create an audio file the bit that you see the actual bit that you see down here in Premiere Pro is the peak file um, these bits and pieces down here are how tracks are dealt with which I'll come back to a bit later on when we talk about being able to create mono tracks from stereo tracks, dual mono from stereo and these bits and pieces down here are really to do with when we actually do some mixing or we want to thin out keyframes so we're not going to deal with those at the moment we'll come back to those a bit later on. Now audio hardware 
this is the Premier Pro version. You can choose your default device. Now my system's got quite a few options. You've probably just got the one unless you've got audio cards set up. So Premier Pro default is fine. And then you click on this one that says ASIO settings. And when you click on that, it gives you the option to be able to set up your output device and your input device. Now I'm using speakers and dual headphone for my output device. For my input device, I have an integrated microphone in my laptop, but I also have an external microphone, the one I'm speaking on, plugged in. I just want that one because it gives me better results. So I'm just going to click on that. Don't really need to bother with any of the other settings unless you want to go for very high recording quality. For instance, you can go for a 32-bit recording. That would really increase the overall size of your files, but it might also increase your quality. And this is probably the same place, this particular panel, where you would have those Mac OS settings for being able to select which bit of hardware you're going to use. And audio output mappings is really saying where the individual channels will play. Now I've got a stereo channel and it's saying one side's going to channel 1 and the other side's going to channel 2. And as you can see here, these look very much like the 5.1 surround sound that we dealt with in the previous tutorial. And you can just see which channel it is with the little speaker. So it's showing you that's the left channel going to the left output, that's the right channel going to the right front output. Okay, that's all set up. I can't actually change that here. If I wanted to change that, I'd need to have a different system set up to actually change it. That's simply telling me what the default settings are. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm ready for recording. And to record, I can go to Record. And then right at the top, you'll notice that I have a drop down. And if you have multiple devices selected in your settings, you'll have those options here. I've just got the one. So that's now selected. I can click the Record button down here and that is now triggered ready for recording and as soon as I click the play button recording will begin the only thing to say is when you have finished recording don't push the stop button this will turn into a stop button don't push the stop button instantly you finish your words always give it a beat because Premiere Pro with all computer applications has to process the sound and if you push stop too quickly you'll cut off the end of a word so let me just do a quick recording for you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you'll see it's down here in my timeline. It's also added it to my project panel. If I open it up, you'll see that I've got a mono recording. Zoom right in. A mono recording. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just pulling these between these to show you how it looks. I'm not going to play it back for you, but the only thing to notice is I have you can clearly see here distorted I've gone above and beyond the end and when you get this flattening of a waveform like this that tells you that you've distorted basically you were too loud so if that has happened there's not a lot you can do except re-record it what I would always advise you doing if you are going to do a recording start off by doing a couple of samples first so that you can get your recording levels correct so that you don't end up with this distortion going on these waveforms look fine this one's just touching the edge so maybe a little bit too loud all these ones are fine because they've got plenty of headroom above and below so don't get to the point where you end up with this distortion because that will just have to be re-recorded or you'll end up with your audio guy spending ages trying to make it sound half decent so do a test recording check out how it is and make sure that all your audio files look like these not like this one and then you're ready to record a bit later on the last thing to say is when you do any recording be it onto your camera or be it into Premiere Pro what you need to be very careful of is that these are big enough because if these waveforms are very very small and very close to the line particularly cameras more so perhaps than this system here have got noise that is generated and if the signal this is called the signal is too close in level to the noise it's almost impossible to get rid of the noise. It can be done, it takes a lot of work. So what you want is a good ratio, in other words you want this quite big in comparison to the actual level, this line in the middle, the, the noise level, which is there with all systems and particularly with cameras. So when you're recording you don't want to get to distortion but you also don't want to have it so small, say like something like this little blip here, you don't want it so small that it's very very close to the level of the noise of the system. That's called the signal to noise ratio. You want it 
this level here or this level here and then noise is not a problem you can actually get rid of noise you can process noise out of the system without a problem but if you've got a very very small recording with a tiny little line in here and it's close to the actual noise of your system it's going to cause you problems and you're not going to have ideal results so that's how you can record once you're done turn off the record button up here the channel is no longer ready to record and you can then process this however you wish